Let me know in the comments what your favorite console generation is of all time. I'll be doing a video about this very soon, so drop your thoughts in the comment section. I'll read through them and we'll revisit them when I make that video. Is the video game industry in trouble? There are several reports coming out that video game sales are down dramatically for the first half of 2024. And if you look at the figures, they're absolutely right. However, there are several reasons for that. So Eurogamer, which is the main article that I'm going to reference here, will be linked for you in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. They're stating that in the UK, spending on video games has plummeted by 29.4% during the first half of the year, while music and video sales grew, and that's up by about 7.9%. Now, initially, you'd think, oh dear, what is going on? Why are we not buying as many video games? Does that mean that the industry is now in trouble? Are we going to see less and less video games? Are they going to disappear? Don't panic. A lot of these places, not Eurogamer to be fair to them, but a lot of the other places, the the high quality news outlet that is metro.co.uk would have you think that the video game industry is in disrepair and in the next 10 years we won't even have video games. But it's not quite as deep as that, although there are some issues. The issue is that we just haven't had a big release in 2024, which is nothing really out of the ordinary to a certain extent. We do kind of rely on the likes of Nintendo to sort of pump those numbers up in the first half of the year because they tend to release big games between January and July. Whereas most developers and publishers, of course, will look to release their games at the back end of the year because video game sales, believe it or not, are unbelievably seasonal. Figures will quadruple, sometimes even go higher than that through November and December with people buying for Christmas. And the rest of the year, yes, people do buy video games, but it's absolutely nowhere near the amount that they do within November and December. So to throw some figures at you, for those who are interested, physical game sales are down by 40%. That might not sound that surprising to many because physical game sales have been down for God knows how long, but it is a little bit worrying. And that, of course, is compared to the first six months of 2023. And digital download sales fell by 23%. That doesn't include the likes of Game Pass and PS Plus. Plus, and does anyone use the Ubisoft platform? I don't know, but that doesn't include those sort of subscription services, if you will. It's just people physically buying video games. You don't own a, a digital download, I know, but that's for a different video. Let's not get into it. But in the first half of 2023, of course, we had a huge release. It was Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That is a system seller. That is going to sell thousands, millions of copies. It's just going to blow up and inflate the figures massively. This year, we've had... Final Fantasy 7, I think. I, I don't really know. I don't know of any massive game that's come out this year. And for the longest time, Nintendo didn't even have anything on their release radar. They do now, but back at the end of 2023, people were very certain that uh, we were going to get the Switch 2 in 2024 because they didn't really have anything on their release radar. Now they've sort of beefed it up a little bit and we are going to get a new Zelda at the back end of this year and a few other things along the way. But in terms of 2024, we've not really seen anything outside of that Final Fantasy 7. And I don't actually know how well that sold. I'm just reading from Eurogamer as to what was the biggest title release this year, because to be quite frank, I don't even know. So we do have a new Star Wars game out this year. We have a new EAFC, of course. I'm not sure if FIFA comes out this year or not, or whether it'll come out next year. Don't know an awful lot about that. As I've already mentioned, we do have a new Legend of Zelda game coming out. There is, of course, another Call of Duty, as there is every single year. Another Assassin's Creed, which to be fair to them, they did die down for a few years, and now they're back seemingly with a an annual release. And of course, there is a new Dragon Age, which a lot of people are interested in, and I'm sure will sell an awful lot of copies. So there are some massive games due out this year, and that will, in my opinion anyway, repair any of the damage done in the first half of 2024. So despite the fact that you will see some news outlets reporting that the gaming industry is in disrepair, just don't... Don't ignore them. No, ignore them. Not that I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination. However, from what I've read and using some common sense here, it does make perfect sense that the reason that the figures are down is because they haven't really released much this year. And that kind of goes hand in hand with this generation in general, really. I mean, we don't really have that many big hitters across PlayStation and Xbox. I'm not going to include Nintendo necessarily because they're not, even though they are technically still in this generation, they have been around for a long time with this Switch. You know, they've spanned 
and two generations, whereas the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series consoles have been flagging behind massively. I don't really know the ins and outs of it. They will absolutely blame the pandemic, but that is like a lifetime ago at this point, and they still aren't releasing much of anything. When you compare it to the early days of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, for example, we had so many big games released in the first just six months of the console launch, let alone the first three years. I don't know the exact figures, but I would like to hazard a guess that in the first three years of the 360 and PS3 life cycle, there are probably more games released than we currently have for the PlayStation 5 and indeed the Xbox Series consoles. And I wouldn't be surprised if the first three years of the older generation beat out the entire generation of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, which is just staggering to me. It's, it's unbelievable how few titles we've had. So why are music and video up? Well, it just comes down to big hitters releasing albums, I guess. For example, on music side of things, Eminem has just dropped an album. From my music taste, you've got Sum 41 have released their final album. They're on tour, doing their final tour right now. Sales of that is going to be up. Of course, these sales don't include Spotify and Apple Music and all the rest of it, but it's still up 7.9%. And of course, when it comes to video, you have things like the new Ghostbusters. You've got Dune 2. There's countless Marvel things that people go mad over for no reason. And the one thing that the music and video industry has over video games, and it's more music than video to be fair, is that any artist at any time can just wake up and go, do you know what? Gonna release a greatest hit tomorrow because it's just as easy as pulling a song or two from every album that they've ever done, whacking it together onto a CD or a vinyl, throwing it out there and going, there you go, some new content for you, despite the fact that it's just rehashed into a best of greatest hits. Avril Lavigne, as an example, has released a greatest hits recently and she's now on tour sort of half promoting that as well. That's going to contribute towards music sales. And video, of course, has the same thing where we've just seen a release of Cobra on 4K. Uh, Train to Busan has just come out on 4K. Matrix have just got yet another collection on 4K, but all these will contribute towards sales. When it comes to video games, we do have remasters like The Last of Us, for example, and a few other games get remasters, the Resi series and that. But it does take an awful lot longer to do those and to do them well as it does compared to music and video. But despite all of that, you'll be very pleased to know as a video game enthusiast that video games actually make more money than movies and music anyway in the UK. So despite that sizable 29.4% drop, from January to June 2024, video games made 348.6 million here in the UK, whereas video made 213.7 and music made 163.8. So video games made almost as much as music and video combined. And that's despite the fact that we haven't had a huge release here in 2024. So I would absolutely not be concerned about the video game industry from a will it continue standpoint. I mean, that is a ludicrous thing to suggest in the first place, but some news articles and outlets are actually suggesting that, believe it or not. And yes, the video game industry is in disarray in other areas, but when it comes to sales and whether the sales will continue, I don't think we have to worry too much that the first half of 2024 has been a bit of a slump. Although I will say I am actually concerned for the number of video games that we have. You know, back on the 360 and the PS3 days, we would have two, three, four new releases every single week. I'm not saying that they were AAA world-class games, every single one of them, but the amount of games released means that we have a whole host of video games to go back and revisit. And for those of us who collect, there are so many games on, for example, the Xbox 360 that someone like myself, an enthusiast who had the console at launch who used to buy nearly every single game on release because I worked in a video game store and I had access to them early and discount and blah 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 and yet I can still go into CEX today flick through the games and every now and again I'll pick something up that I have never seen never heard of and knew nothing about whereas on the PlayStation 5 I don't really collect much for it I don't play it much and yet I can probably name 80% of the games that have been released on it and that's because there aren't that many and of course I'm absolutely going to reserve judgment until the end of the generation but unless they really kick into gear now and just start pumping out games this generation will be known as the lack of games generation and that is sad and I'm hoping it's just a drop in the ocean and it's just the one generation and it's not how things are going to continue across the PlayStation 6, 7, 8, 9 however many more iterations of consoles we actually get before everyone decides that PC gaming is actually the best way to go about it. 